What is going on everybody? So today we are going to discuss tractor terminology. I hope I'm not the only one that's confused. So there's some things that when I have customers ask me, I'm trying to figure out exactly what they mean because I think they may actually want something different. Uh, so some of these terms are used interchangeably. Some of them are just labeled incorrectly. Some of them have that uh, generic name like Kleenex would have in the tissue world. Well, so like many of you, my goal is to get a little bit smarter every day. At least I try. So I'm sure there's some days where I'm taking a step backwards, but at least I think I'm taking a step forwards with this video here. So it helped me to get a little bit better understanding of some of those um, commonly used terms that are sometimes interchangeable and not, and hopefully it helps you too. So make sure you leave some comments below with other things that I missed or maybe something I got wrong. That does happen. So thanks so much for watching. Let's get to it. Oh, you know what? I forgot about this. I think there's a term that our buddy Tractor Time with Tim struggles with. Think you know what it is? We'll find out later. Okay, so JDQA, that's what this is right here, all right? This is your John Deere Quick Attach. It's this green carrier bracket that's right here that slides up underneath an attachment and then rocks forward and this black little pin that you can see on here goes right through the bracket and attaches. This is John Deere style, their proprietary style of Quick Attach. And that's a good point. Proprietary. That's not a bad word. So often you hear John Deere's proprietary quick attach system being a bad thing. Well, it's just not the case. Just because it's John Deere quick attach doesn't mean you have to buy it only from John Deere or Frontier. This is a HLA attachment right here. I sell them from WorkSaver. I sell them from Tar River and there's other manufacturers as well. You have a lot of choices. You'll pay the same price as the SSQA. We'll get into that in a minute. So don't worry about it. Don't fret the proprietary system. It's a great system. It's easy to use. I've made a video specifically about this system here if you want to see more information about it. But JDQA, John Deere Quick Attach. Easy as that. Next up, SSQA, Skid Steer Quick Attach. Very simple. Simply a different kind of interface between a front end loader and the attachment itself. Whether it's a set of pallet forks like what you see here, could be a pusher, could be a bucket, you're simply going to have a different interface. And you can see there's two handles right here that you would grab, they're spring loaded. It's going to have a pin that drops down on either end here. Simply a different type of interface uh, similar to the JDQA. But either way, they're both an attachment style. That's all it is. SSQA skid steer quick attach. ROPS. R-O-P-S. Yep, you can either fold it or you can leave it upright, okay? So this is going to be your rollover protection system. So if this tractor tips to the side, well, if you have it up, then it's going to protect you and keep it from rolling over. Hence the name. Pretty simple. Pretty much every tractor since, oh, I don't know, the early 2000s has had this whenever that safety feature was implemented. But rollover protection system, commonly referred to as ROPS. PTO, power takeoff. You see the spline sticking out here, okay? This is called a rear PTO, a rear power takeoff. You hook up an attachment to this, a, a long shaft here, and it'll go to a gearbox, and it can drive a tiller, for instance, or it can drive a brush hog or a rotary cutter. Ooh, that's foreshadowing, that's coming up too. You have rear PTO, and you also have mid PTO. That's this little guy I'm shining the light on right here. See those splines? This is what's going to run your belly mower or a front mount snow blower, for instance. Mid PTO. PTO, power take off. Typically, you'll have a mid and a rear. Not all models will have a mid. What's that you say? What about front PTO? Oh, uh, well, I really just sell tractors with mid and with rear. So when I think of front PTO, it's typically going to be a long shaft that ties into the mid PTO runs all the way up front, and that's what's gonna allow you to run that snowblower or a broom, that kind of attachment on the front. Yeah, there's some models out there that do have an actual true front PTO, but they're few and far between. They're nothing that I sell, and so typically I say it's non-existent, at least in this modern tractor world. Next acronym, SCVs, Selective Control Valves, okay? Most every tractor, the first two, the number one, the number two, are gonna control your front end loader. If you want to control any other hydraulic function, like how your loader goes up and down and the bucket curls and rolls, you need to have additional SCVs, selective control valves. You see two of these, and that's one control valve, okay? You have to have flow going one way, and then if you want the function to reverse, you have to have flow going the other way. That's why you see a pair of these here. 
So there's one, here's one, here's one. This tractor is set up with three additional SCVs. You have the third function right here, you have the fourth function down below, and the fifth function up top. Next up, PB. Well, you don't see that here on this tractor, but I just had a video recently of another one. I'll throw up the video. What PB is, Power Beyond, it's gonna run items like a backhoe, an attachment that has its own controls. So if you're sitting on that backhoe seat, you have those controls there where you can make the backhoe do whatever you want it to do. That's what Power Beyond is for. This type of remote right here does not allow for backhoe operation. While we're back here, why not? Let's talk T and T, okay? Top and tilt. Hydraulic cylinder for your top link, hydraulic cylinder for the side link. Allows you to hydraulically go in or out angle and hydraulically up and down angle this way, okay? That's all it is, T and T, top and tilt. Snow blower or snow thrower, which is it? Is there a difference? Isn't it just the same thing? Okay, so I had to do some research on this one to really see what the internet thought, because the internet knows everything, right? So a snow blower is gonna be what you see here. Both of these guys are what the internet calls a snow blower. Okay, so you have an auger here that's gonna be spinning around, and uh, as you drive forward, the snow is gonna be going right towards here. It's gonna be sucking it in and taking it towards this impeller that's back here. So you have this shaft here that's driving the auger that's making everything spin and take the snow right up here towards the chute. And then you have an impeller back here that's spinning around and actually shooting the snow out, okay? And so it's a two stage or a dual stage, you might hear it called, okay? This one is doing the same exact thing, just a little bit bigger version of that. A snow thrower, on the other hand, is going to be a one stage. And so you're not gonna have this additional impeller that's back here doing anything, okay? You're simply gonna have the main auger here and it's gonna do the work of collecting that snow towards the middle, but then also shooting it out at the same time. So you'll see a lot of this on walk behind machines, for instance, or really small snow blowers that are on garden tractors. Uh, sometimes the older subcompacts will have those single stage snow throwers as well. I think it's okay to interchange that term snow thrower and snow blower. I have commonly used the term snow blower to describe all of those for all of my existence, and I think I'm just fine with that. For me, the bigger difference is that it's a one stage versus a two stage, or a single stage versus a dual stage, okay? That's the thing that you wanna clarify. I happened to be in my local Ace Hardware and saw a Toro snow thrower right in there, okay? So take a look at that too. I gotta admit, this one still has me a little bit confused. So you have implements, you have attachments, and you have accessories, right? Well, the accessories, I think those are pretty easy to figure out. You got these mirrors here, you know, if you get one of those knob spinners, that kind of thing, you know, those are accessories. If you add on an LED light bar, that's an accessory, right? However, what's the difference between an implement and an attachment? But if you're one of those that needs to distinguish an implement from an attachment, well, we'll go ahead and go through that now. An attachment is something that's attached to your tractor. I guess you must need to think about it in more of a semi-permanent manner because essentially any implement could also be attached to your tractor. But my understanding is something like a front-end loader or a backhoe, for instance, those are two popular examples of what an attachment for your tractor might be. An implement, on the other hand, would be something that goes on the front of the loader or the three-point hitch of the tractor, something like a snow pusher or pallet forks or perhaps you have a plow or a tiller or a brush hog. Perhaps those are implements. However, there's also an even further level to the implement, which is that it has to be ground engaging. I don't know where these rules are coming from. I prefer to call all of them attachments. It really simplifies it for me. And does it really matter in the long run? Let me count the names. Let's see, rotary cutter, rotary chopper, brush hog, bush hog, rotary mower, finish mower, rotary chopper. What else? I'm sure I'm forgetting some. This thing is called a lot of things. Some of those names are correct, in my opinion, and some of them are a completely different implement. A rotary cutter is correct, okay? Also known as a brush hog or a bush hog. Kind of like, I think anyways, how Kleenex is uh, the common name heard for tissue. I think a bush hog, being a very popular brand a while back, uh, was commonly referred to and, and described rotary cutters, okay? And so rotary cutters are very different from finished mowers, and they do a, a different type of cutting. 
These are a very thick, heavy blade that's made for just chopping, taking down heavy brush, and, and not really leaving a fine manicured uh, field or pasture, okay? Where a finish mower, on the other hand, is what you would see uh, on, a, on a rear finish mower, you know, or even a belly mower that could be a finish mower. But these heavy blades right here are not intended to give you that really fine cut like a rotary mower, okay? What you're taking a look at right here is a finish mower, okay? This is a rear finish mower. It's going to be mounted on your three-point hitch right there and run off that rear PTO, the power takeoff. This is essentially going to do the same thing as what a belly mower would do. You will have three individual spindles that are driving separate blades. It's going to chop everything up very finely and evenly disperse that. These are intended to be used on manicured areas that are going to be maintained on a regular basis. You do not want to go chopping through brush and briars and everything else with these. They're just simply not intended to do so. So again, this is a finished mower, very similar to what a belly mower would do, although this is a three-point mounted version versus what would go underneath the belly of the tractor. However, the main distinction is that a mower is totally different from a cutter or a chopper or a brush hog. Let's talk about the right size attachment for your tractor. There's an old rule of thumb that says five PTO horsepower per foot of implement. So a really good way to look at the right size attachment for your tractor is going to be the rear width of the machine. Typically you want to be right around that rear width, maybe a little bit wider. This goes for buckets, it goes for tillers, it goes for brush hogs, it goes for grapples. So there are a few attachments you can go wider than the tractor without really having any troubles. Things like a landscape rake or a rear blade or even a land leveler. You're not putting a lot of stress on the tractor and therefore you can go with a wider attachment and be perfectly fine with that. Next up, position control. We have a three-point hitch and we have our three-point hitch control, also known as a rock shaft lever. This is in the raised position and if I move it to the low position, the three-point hitch will drop down. What position control does is allow you to come back to that same position every time. I'm going to turn the machine on and go through this process. What position control allows you to do with a three-point hitch is return to that same exact spot every time, time after time. You cannot do that with quarter inch control. This can be accomplished on position control with two features. Typically you're going to have little markings that are on your three-point hitch lever that allow you to go right back to the same spot every time. And you will also have a little stop that's adjustable. You can loosen it up, put it to a certain spot, tighten it back down. So when you raise and lower that three-point hitch, it goes right back down to that stop, the same spot, the same position every time. In comparison, quarter inch control, you push it down and let go, comes right back to the middle. You push it up and let go, it comes right back to the middle, okay? So this is only going to move down as long as you're holding it down. And it's only going to move up as long as you're holding it up. If you want to try to get to the same spot every time, when you're lowering something, you got to lower it down a little bit, a little bit more, oop, got to raise it up a little bit down a little bit, and you're kind of guessing at the right position for your three-point implement. That's the difference between a quarter-inch control and position control. Okay, so now we have just one little bone to pick with our buddy Tim, okay? Tractor time with Tim, if somehow you guys don't know. But I love everything the guy does. I just have one bone to pick with him. Did you guys figure it out? Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's grease. Grease? What's so complicated about grease, you say? Well, nothing. I mean, when I go to grease my tractor, I'm greasing my tractor. I'm greasing the fittings. When I go to the store, I'm looking for grease. If I ask the salesman for help, where's your grease at? No problem. Right over here, sir. If I go to Amazon, I want to order it on Amazon. I just type in grease. You know, G-R-E-A-S-E. -E. Yeah, there's no Z in there. But some folks prefer to call it grease or grease in their tractors. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe some of you are on the grease wagon too. But for me, it's grease. That's all. <laughs> all right, guys. What'd I get right? What'd I get wrong? What did I forget about? You got some other stuff? Leave it in the comments below. While you're at it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, make sure you check out my other videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Well, as some of you guys know, I've been on a little bit of a, uh, a John Deere vintage and antique kick lately. This sign here isn't exactly either one of those, it's brand new, but 
it was uh, a pretty cool item there so I had to get that but what this is here is an item I purchased off of eBay and um, it's said to be a clock from a dealer in the 1960s or 70s and uh, still in really good working condition. Oh yeah, that's really cool. So what we have here is a really cool old clock. And, and as I'm kind of getting more into this, you know, I'm learning more about you know, the different uh, vintages and ages of these relics. And it's kind of hard to figure out, but this is a, a four-legged version here, which is of an older era as well. And a lot of this stuff has been reproduced and you can't see it, but down in the bottom here, it says Telecron Inc, Ashland, Massachusetts, USA. Uh, it does say John Deere, it does not have a date on there anywhere. And it does light up. If we take a look at the back, See, it's got a couple of the uh, locations there. Those little covers are for the bulbs. It says use 15 watt lamps only on there. It does plug in. We'll go ahead and plug it in now and make sure it's still working. Well, that's pretty cool. You can see the second hand going around as soon as we plugged it in. Got one of the bulbs in there that's working just fine. Looks like the other bulb is out. In the pictures that they sent me in the listing, both of them are working. I think what I'm gonna do tomorrow is just go get another bulb, a 15 water there, probably two of them, and put a fresh bulb on either side there and make sure both are functioning as they should. It'll be great once I get this time set here to get it uh, set and monitor it for a day or two as well, make sure it's still keeping accurate time. But really, it's a pretty cool relic. You know, I'm happy to have it. I think it'll dress up the place a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of keep chipping away and adding more stuff as I go along.